Welcome to another broadcast of Habits and Money. Today, I have a very dynamic personality in studio. This individual is an executive coach, a keynote speaker, and there's also an author. But there is so much more depth to this individual. So I encourage you to join me in welcoming no other than Patrice. Hey, Patrice, how how are you? <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Patrice. How are you? Bonjour, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Patrice, I can see as I look at your background, you have a master's degree uh, in your field. You're into fashion, you're into psychology, you're into mm -hmm. leadership, international business. You have connection with Hollywood. Oh my, you have a list of things going on here, <laughs> Patrice. Talk to us. Let us begin by looking at your experience and your degree. And talk to us a little bit about what that experience was like and why did you go after the, the degree that you have? Yeah, you know, when I was a kid, three things to me were extremely clear. I was going to be an entrepreneur because I would be on my own. I was going to not be with someone above me. I was going to choose something creative, something I love doing, passionate and be the best at what I do and also helping others. I had no idea how that was going to format, but I knew those three things were going to be the main components of my life. So I chose hair initially as a craft, but in it, at 18 years old, I was managing three salons for one of the largest brand in France and most luxurious level. That got me at 18 years old to come to the US, which was my little boy's dream, and open my first biz when I was 19 and some change. And that was the beginning of where everything happened because now I'm like, all right, this is it, the dream, the American dream. The one everyone around the world talks about. Some people lose their lives for that dream. Here I am. Now, how do I look at it? Yes, I have my business. I'm thriving by the time I'm early 20s. But now, where is my vision, mission, and purpose? But still, it was very cloudy. I was here, got caught into the system of making money and ambitious and driven. But also, I also knew that I wanted to look at things. I always looked at things from a backstage perspective, the psychology of things, the why of everything. My, my mom said, from the time you were three years old, everything was why. Mom, I don't understand. Explain that to me. So that was always a mechanic in me to do that. Fast forward, hired a PR in Beverly Hills, and that's when I started now walking onto the red carpet in Hollywood, starting working with celebrities. Same thing, Little Boy's Dream, the equivalent of the French People magazine, because Paris is where I'm from. And that's where things started formulating into, now I'm helping people with their appearance but more so I'm putting them through a bunch of questions because really at the end appearance is only the last thing you are coming to is the why why do you want to wear that what do you want to tell the world what does that nanosecond when you walk into a room whether you're a CEO of a company launching a new product making a public apology in front of the media perhaps you're premiering your movie and you're on the red carpet next to Angelina Jolie or Cameron Diaz well the message is very different so that started getting me to understand, all right, I'm helping with their appearance, but more so with the psychology of it. And how do I format it into a business? I'm helping, I'm getting paid to help, but still the message is not really getting there. And my vision, mission, and purpose really came in 2010 when I lost everything, got robbed by my business partner. The market crashed in 2008, as we remember. And this is when I slept in my car for some. I actually realized at that very moment, why am I here? What are the three things that were the most important to me. Being a creative, being on my own and helping others. Moved to Beverly Hills full time and I was actually sharing my life between Manhattan and, and Beverly Hills. But this is when things started shifting. I understood, all right, it's all good, fine and dandy. Here I am with my dream. I don't have a penny in my pocket, but I still have my experience, my dream and my and my passion. The first book, Mind Your Hair, came around and that got received so well. The through line essentially is, hey, don't think a makeover is making over your life. It's only making over that moment in time, but it doesn't sustain into success. That got received so well, I got signed up by a keynote agent. And from that moment on, I started growing my message until realizing now I can put what I do into a process. And thanks to a lady called Cindy Brown, who became a very good friend, and she helped me crafting for two years this process of how to help executive global leaders, high-level achievers to put into a process what appearance is actually really 
completely the subliminal message of what you sent. And that's when Mind Your Impact, my latest book, Style Interventionist, came out last year. Now this is really the, hey, now branding is a thing. I can help you build your brand. And more so that your parents, I'm going to make you think of how you portray yourself. What do you convey? How do you, when you're walking into the room, that nanosecond instant, that first impression, that's the only one everywhere, everyone is going to remember. How does that look like? And this is pretty much where I'm at. Great. All right, um, Patrice, you are the owner of Image Impact Index LLC, and that company provides executive coaching support. It provides keynote speaking support, and you're also an author. I want to take each of these skill sets and look at them individually. Can we begin by looking at executive coaching? As an executive coach, what can the public or the ideal client expect from you as an executive coach? Yes, it's a great question because often it's too often like life coaching or it's not. I'm a branding and image coach and I'm not a consultant either. It's a very, very diff different uh, way of, of wording it because I have worked only, I, I was always very clear about my market. My avatar was super, super clear from the time I was a kid. I wanted to be in the luxury market. The celebrity side of it, of course, was appealing. Again, the red carpet element. But executive coach to me is the most rewarding thing because I'm meeting, first of all, the most incredible people, leaders from around the world. Because by building this relationship, one to the other, and the word of mouth, and then the reputation I started building and crafting, that's what got me to say, hey, I can actually help you. You're stuck here. I'm able to tell you that this and this and that is actually the problem. In fact, I show, I don't tell. And when I coach, this is the thing too. My way of doing it is asking you a ton of questions. I'm not just here to say, hey, I know it all. I do. I know the answers before you do. Obviously, this is why I'm getting paid for. But this more importantly make you think. And executives at some given moment Either the career has taken so much of their time that they are not really taking care of the personal or else they're stuck into this place of that one job. And now they want to get to the promotion. They want to get to the next level. They want to make more money, but they don't understand how that even works. How do I go about it? I've been stuck in here for so long. Now, how do I go to become the CEO, the CEO, whatever level that you want to reach? And that's what I do. I bring you to think and not just think as hey here's the map now nah. every week we meet two hours for nine weeks my coaching program is crafted and custom upon the first discovery call we have then i craft and custom what's going to happen next for nine weeks i love that so that's a clear establishment in terms of what Image Impact Index LLC does. This is something that the public can expect. You want to uh, have a better idea as to how to present yourself publicly, how to get that promotion, how to connect with your with your boss and make things happen. Executive coach, you, part of what you do is to get people mentally and physically prepared for, for that process. Love it. I noticed also, uh, Patrice, that you're also a keynote speaker and an author. Can we speak first of what is your role as a keynote speaker? What exactly are you tasked with? Uh, help us to understand that, uh, that platform. Yes. And so it started out, as I was explaining a little earlier, with Mind Your Hair. So again, the story, because of the hair uh, element, it catered a lot psychologically. People really connected with the women's market. And that's what this keynote agent in New York signed me for because she said, I have a ton of female empowerment group and organizations. You gotta be perfect because I understand the through line of your book, which is essentially take things from within and then you can align them so then you can blossom them out, which was exactly what I said, which uh, I loved it because, okay, message received. It's not about just a hair makeover story. It really is about you make over your life from within. That was the first moment that I realized. And I come from a place where I was a kid that was super, super shy. I was, I mean, I couldn't even, if I found the smallest hole, I could hide in it. And now seeking for the camera and actually being able to express a message publicly, I love it. And the first time, of course, I got on stage, I was like, I mean, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. And at the same time, there was this energy about sharing a message now in front of, and it was probably 400 people. 
which was a fair amount of people for my first keynote. That was just this moment in time where I'm like, my heart is beating, not even in my chest. It was in my head. It was, it was everywhere. But at the same time, I'm like, this is what it is. Then when the moment was going, literally, I saw myself being like, this is what I was seeking for. That moment of helping others. Okay. And a long time, of course, I perfected my crap because initially all I was doing was talking. Now I was able to do it in a way where it's interactive. When I do my keynote, I love to bring people and interjecting and asking the crowd questions because first of all, who wants to sit for an hour, listen to someone? Nobody. I mean, at some point it's like your mind is drifting. It's only you. And so I make sure that the crowd is included in what I do. So that's the first part. And then at the end, I have a question answer session where now you can have your custom answer, which I take great pride of because it shows a couple of things. My authenticity, and as you can hear, I'm passionate in my voice and I speak with my hands and all that. But also it's about knowing that now I have the value people are seeking. I'm able to answer something intelligent, insightful, uh, intuitive, whatever it is that you take with you, but you take that with you. And that to me is the mission every keynote speaker should do and not just get on stage and just talk. It's about including your audience because that's how it works. And that's for me, it's a great passion. I, I must say, as I listen to you and I look at all the success that you have within, I see why these things match up. One, I see you you have experience as a fashion designer. You have experience as a psychologist, as a leader, as an international business consultant. I feel your passion for public speaking. But I want to come right back to your role as an executive coach. You did mention that your program runs for about nine weeks. And you also mentioned that part of your job is to work people from the inside out, where their inner beauty is nurtured and developed and is to flow from that inner beauty. How easy is it really helping people to connect with that inner beauty, embracing the inner beauty and shining from that space? Can you share with us what that journey is like for you? Yes. And that's another great question because you see when an exec is, is uh, hiring me, First of all, there's some re often there's some resistance. And yeah, guys, it's a male thing. Yeah, of course, there is an ego thing where it's like, I don't really need you. All right, you don't need me. But while you're here in front of me, ah, you know, maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm stuck. Maybe, you know, and initially they think it's going to be more of a visual experience. It's going to be a fashion experience. And of course, I'm not going to tell them that by the end of the sessions we're going to do for nine weeks, you're going to be fashion literate. Literally, you're going to understand fashion, but not in a way of I hear all the time. I'm not famous. I'm not an influencer. Actually, you are. As an executive and as a leader, your role is to inspire. And the psychology of your appearance, then they get to realize that after the first session, we go so deep into patterns of behaviors, turning points, environment, mindset, self-sabotage, all those things together, suddenly crafting, crafted uh, in a bullet point form where it's like, wow, and I make them talk. So that's the thing with my clients. I show them again, it's very important. I don't tell them, but the executives have often been so swallowed into this spiral of career and time. And if they have a family, they haven't thought so much. And yet they thought of their career and how to progress with the career itself. But then at the same time, they're stuck in time because either, and it could be personal as well, because executives could be, they've been divorced for a bunch of years. They have given so much into their career and now back into the dating world. Oh, they think, okay, if I look good, my hair looks good, my suit or my dress looks good, I'm good. You're not. This is the thing. First impression is personal and professional all at the same time. It's not like you have two bodies. You only have one and the person leaving the house is the one working in a workplace, in a boardroom, in front of a client to pitch them. And that's what it is where when I do it is, first of all, I love the level of intelligence. There is so much achievement and accomplishment for my clients that it's a great experience. But I'm loving the fact that those people have already reached 95% of what you can reach in one's career. But they're missing that one little, in fact, that's not really that one percenter. 
And I'm able to find in that whole engine, the grain of sand that has actually stopped that machine from going all the way, remove it, identify it, and now I can take all the pieces apart. And now we say, all right, where is the departure? Where is the destination? And now we can formulate it into an evergreen blueprint. Elevate your business with 10X Branding and Marketing LLC. Our expert team specializes in enhancing your brand's visibility and connecting you with your ideal clients. We employ strategies that increase reach, leaving a lasting impact and driving client conversion. Trust and credibility are vital in businesses and excel in building them even with a limited budget. Our cost-effective approaches ensure you get the best results without overspending. Ready to boost your business cash flow? Contact us at 322-235-T99 and let 10X Branding and Marketing LLC guide you to success. Our focus is on elevating your visibility, which directly translates to growth. Experience the power of effective branding and marketing with us and witness your business thrive. Brilliant. What I admire about what you do is really helping people to connect with the authentic self. Because sometimes what I see happens, you may be academically qualified. You may be an expert at what you do, but inside of you, something is wrong. Because you're not connected with that deeper sense of self, you're not shining in your essence. So I really love what you're actually um, doing in that regard. Can we talk a little bit about your book? You have written a book, which is titled, I believe, um, Style in Intervention. Can you talk to us about what was your motive for writing Style Intervention? I'll go back a little bit because it's really what's, what's important. Because when I wrote Mind Your Hair, I was actually sick. When they, when they literally, I had my aha moment. I was so aligned. I did meditation. I was so perfectly clear in my mind. So tired of looking at the social media and the way it mistreated the idea of appearance. Like, oh, you know, fix your hair, fix your skin. I mean, put, you know, filters on your profile, put hair extensions, put fake eyelashes, implant yourself. And it's all fine if that's what makes you happy but i realized those poor girls of the world and guys because it's a gender neutral and god forbid you know that you say something but really it speaks to everyone i realized that this is not how that works appearance is only the end of the journey if you don't do the work from within but well, there is no success you can put and i've seen it on on you know, rising stars, you know, a dress for hundred, two hundred thousand dollars made by the most couture, uh, best guy in the world. But if they don't own the person, in fact, they'll be scared to wear it and say, oh, my God, instead, anyone would think, oh, my God, you're going to look like a queen for a day you're wearing a two hundred thousand dollar gown. You're wearing millions of dollars worth of jewelry. It doesn't matter if you don't own your space. It doesn't work. And that's how my hair came about. I'm like, yeah. Uh, nonsense and this chaos that it's creating in people's mind let me help them understand no appearance is from you so then of course i i was able to craft my message more precisely because it's a daily thing to just refine refine and i'm still refining now i'm writing my third book this is so mind your impact style intervention he said all right with all the examples i had made in my life what are the ones that are easy to understand and yet to realize how profound the turning point is oh how about this guy on the brink of bankruptcy literally meet him in a in a show it was a, a digital show actually for three days we sat next to each other at the end of it it's like oh what do you do what do you do kind of small talk because you know after three days you're sitting next to the same person it's kind of like all right let's talk to him now the show is over all right. You get to realize he's actually this brilliant guy has this IT service that he has created. Brilliant. Okay. Now he's like, all right, I'm going to pitch it now. I'm going back to Sweden and I'm going to pitch it to, you know, that's where he was from and he is from. And he said, I'm going to go. And I say, okay. So somehow, because I talk about appearance, they go, oh, you know, good old Viking. Oh, I'm not a fashion. I'm not a fashionista. I don't need that. You don't need what? Oh, I don't need to, you know, dress up. You know, I'm brilliant. I'm a geek. Mm hmm even as a geek. Why don't we look at the leaders of geeks, the leaders of, you know, the owner of Twitter and Instagram and all those guys. Yeah. Oh, they're wearing the sneakers. The culture of sneakers is very expensive. Even they're in t-shirt and, and jacket. That jacket is extremely well fitted and the t-shirt is high quality. So possibly do you think dress like that, you're going to sell a very expensive, uh, 
example of service when you look like you roll out of bed this is the message you're going to give fast forward is telling me, oh, I'm going to meet with this guy. All right, what do we know about this guy? Oh, I don't know. Well, with all the resources we have today, let's meet the guy online. Let's see what he looks like. Let's see what he speaks like. Let's see what he does. Quickly, of course, I realize this guy is all about Ferragamo. All right, that's the brand that he can afford and that's the brand he enjoys. But I can recognize so many pieces of that that I'm like, that is the language we're going to speak. Of course, now I'm telling that to this guy who is like, because basically it was a crash course with him because I'm like, look at what's going on. Of course, he's like, oh, he's dressed up. Yeah, he's dressed up. But there is a point of view through the through line of his outfit is a brand. Okay, I understand you're not the guy who knows brands. Okay. You don't have to be fashion literate yet. Understand just conceptually, visually, subliminally. How do we speak? Same thing as when you're a couple. You meet in the middle. I'm not telling you to trade who you're not, but you also need to speak some of that language in order for the people to connect because now what do you want to do? Establish trust. If you don't have that trust coming, there is no conversation, no business, and it will be a bye-bye because... It's not happening. I'm getting him to buy a pair of Ferragamo shoes. So I didn't know how bad he was financially, but he was really, really bad. So I saw he was going to have a heart attack at a cash register, never spend that much money on a pair of shoes. Now, of course, polished enough, simple shirt and, and pants, but I knew the, 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 the shoes were going to be the bridge of the conversation. Now he walks into the, the office of this guy. Now I know exactly who he's meeting. Of course, the guy, first thing he does is, whoa, look at those shoes. I have the same look in different color. Now, men of taste have men or men of conversation. Small talk leads to, what do you do? Now, the ignition of the trust is starting because that point of reference was common to both. And commonality is how you can build a relationship. That's how people do business together. That's how they marry each other. That's how they become friends. That's the moment that is going to be shifting. You know, just like Michael Gladwell did the, 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 uh, the tipping point. That was the tipping point that was ignited. Now, conversation around into such quality that the guy was so into what he did that he signed a multi-million dollar deal. So for instance, that was what I did. An executive in Hollywood, by putting a pair of jeans on her, I completely changed what was happening. Her workflow was terrible. The way people were communicating together was terrible because the idea she had is I should be mighty, I dress in my Chanel suits, and everything is the way it should be. I rule and I have the people I rule. How about we change just enough of that message? She was resistant at first. Oh, a pair of jeans. Are you kidding me? I'm not wearing a pair of jeans. Jeans are for losers. So jeans are for... Why don't we try? Okay, let's give it a try. By giving it a try, the first day, the reaction was so immediate because now suddenly, subliminally, she was saying, hey, guys, I'm with you. I'm with you on this. What happened? Now, everybody's connecting better. Everybody, the workflow is happening and they quantified it by more money because now you could feel that the studio was actually in complete harmony together. And that was just starting from a pair of jeans. So these are the stories I tell in my hair style intervention is by changing one thing on their appearance I literally transform their lives. Again, the name of your business really tells a whole story. Image Impact Index. What I'm hearing here is that you're helping people to index all of those things that is necessary for them to create impact in their environment. Again, what I love about it is that very often, you know, for a company, you focus a lot on the corporate branding, but then you don't focus as much on the personal branding. And it is the personal branding that is helping you to break through that know, like, and trust. It's the personality's ability to connect with the ideal client. And everything that you have said, I do believe it's relevant to get in buy-in. Your story is that you help the guy to identify the right shoe. So when he goes out to the, the, the client, the client see commonality. And because there's commonality, there's more grounds for trust. And because there's more ground for trust, it's easier to build relationships. So I can see that Image Impact Index, LLC, is really setting out to help the individual to do that holistic branding internally and how they appear in their outfits.
and um, to make that type of impact. Loving it. But talk to me, Patrice. Um, I recognize that you've also have experience working with uh, celebrities from the, the Hollywood platform. What is that experience like? I mean, in your career, how does it feel to be selected by the Hollywood who is who to be advised and to be mentored and to be coached? How does that accomplishment feel for you? It was a dream. The first time I got to participate to the Oscars, which is literally the holy grail of Hollywood, as everyone knows, even if you don't know anything about movies or fashion or any of the above, you know what the Oscars are. And for me to be part of that the first year was like, wow, here I am. Here I am talking to those people I've seen in movies and I've seen as a little boy in magazines and suddenly they're in front of me and I'm having a conversation or yet I'm working with them. It was definitely super fulfilling. It was frightening. It was exciting. It had all the components in it. But just as everything, also, I realized the disconnect between same thing, hey, fake it until you make it let's get this appearance going and i made them think to say no but this this is not like this doesn't work you need to align your emotion with your appearance and now this is your brand you're not just gonna because i decide you're, what you're gonna wear and that was very enlightening to me to realize those people were like literally you need to put that into a process which i didn't know at the time i'm an intuitive i'm a creative i'm an artist i, I, I didn't know how that looked and how would i formulate that into a process i just knew i knew just by understanding feeling describing working with hollywood made me realize yeah when you want to be on top over there that means you have a responsibility you have a social responsibility also because now you're telling girls and guys of the world this is how it works they are listened to by large audiences that's why not they feel like they can talk about politics and social and environment okay that's why now that appearance has to align with everything you you care for everything you believe in the core value of what you want to display and that's what Hollywood did for me and with it obviously then started coming the global leaders people that were big shakers and movers in the industry it enlarged itself into entrepreneurs emerging or at a high high level and that's how everything started igniting my career and that's how I realized every morning if you don't align your message what you have in your mind your emotions the way you feel and put it into visual cues you got to subliminate tell people your story by just the moment you walk into the room and like you said how do you make a difference well you make a difference by you go to a job interview and i know i'm digressing a little bit from hollywood but it's the same thing it's about hey you want that role it's actually the same the same analogy you're an actor now you're in a casting how are you going to make a difference between 200 people the casting agent has already seen a million people hr is the same oh i need to feel like i'm wearing the black suit the blue suit the gray suit okay and i'm talking ladies as well where it's the pantsuit or you know okay after 200 people i can guarantee you you'll never get the job now you show up with authenticity this morning you have identified all right this is how i feel this is what i want to people to show i mean to to receive as a message this is what i want to tell the world this is how i want to tell my story the way i look you are going by walking into the room make that difference because vibrationally remember we made a 35 percent of water we react to vibrations we are reacting beings now the moment you exude that energy because now your authenticity is at a hundred percent just at best now the moment you walk into the room yes already right there the visual will make the difference because the person already has the credentials in front of them and same thing with hollywood we already know if you're getting cast for a movie we know now it's hey let's work on that role let's see what it should look like feel like smell like you know just that the environment of it that's what i do and that's how hollywood really helped me to understanding the corporate culture okay. uh, patricia i can see that you're also a super connector you are an influencer you're a leader but i'm seeing that you're also a super connector and i say this against the backdrop i also see that you're also on the board of Marcy University for Women Leadership. Talk to us a, a little bit about that. That's a 
pretty prestigious position to roll, hold because I know that you're able to give, use your experience to give advice and give some support uh, to various faculty heads. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yes. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, you know, in fact, I got, I got accepted fairly quick. The process is normally a very long, heavy process. And it took me two meetings for the lady who is in charge of it to say, you're in. And I have to say, you're right. It, it, it was much more than just the title itself. Of course, I received the plaque and the certificate and all that in this beautiful box. So it was the visual, of course, reminded me, wow, it did happen. It was not just a phone call. But it's about, again, the social responsibility. Because when I speak, in front of those groups, they're not just at university. They actually are with many others, you know, such as Cornell and Princeton. And there, there are a lot of very, very prestigious colleges associated with them. And knowing that I'm online in front of my camera, but changing a group of people, women for that matter, because it's women in leadership, same thing, either emerging uh, entrepreneur, because some of them, they're different tiers, you know, from beginners until extremely accomplished and ladies that are the execs from Fortune 500 companies. And knowing that they're seeking the value I'm going to share with them to say, hey, I can help you build your brand. So let's think about it from a different perspective. I'm going to take you to a journey that's different. And knowing that I'm in the middle of academic, which is the most like ruled and strict, and they are like step by step that you don't break. And I come with my intuitive perspective and able to infuse what I have learned around the world because I travel all the time to be able to share that with those women, make a difference, receive texts and messages and emails to say, wow, you changed my life just by listening to you. I have a problem. Hey, could you help me with that solution? And that alone, the reward and the fact that I've accomplished that when I remember I came at 18 years old, not knowing a soul in America. Yeah, it felt Amazing. Fantastic. I want us to talk a little bit about your vision uh, for the future. In looking at your bio and having some brief analysis of your background, I recognize that you are successful. I mean, the things that we have talked about so far doesn't even represent half of the success that you have accomplished. <laughs> so we're going to leave the other half for the next interview. You have been in business for 25 years now. You have been doing pretty well for yourself. I want to say kudos to, to you. Let's talk a little bit about your vision. What is What are some of your short-term goals that you have? I know that part of your plan might be to increase visibility to increase reach and impact can we talk a little bit about that of course yes absolutely you're right you know i'm a passionate as you can hear and i've worked really hard for this business to grow because you know how many times and that's part when i do entrepreneur i i, I speak in colleges for instance and i i speak to entrepreneurial uh, programs and uh, international business and the setting that people are going to tell you but oh, you're in fashion you're already successful you're fine coaching helping people branding what the hell why would you even do that why would you waste your time i remember a client of mine and she's still a client actually on the fashion side you know but it's like we were driving she picked me up and she's like no 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 i want to pick you up uh, at the airport and you know that way we'll have time to to talk while driving home and catch up a little bit before it gets frantic because she's a big ceo for a company everybody knows but she said to me something i was like okay i mean i thought you were my friend and she said Oh, honey, bother with this thing. Who cares? You're great at what you do. No one will buy what you're doing because it's too far from what you're doing. You know what I'm thinking? But if you had paid attention, what I'm doing with you, literally what we're going to do today is what I finally put into a process and books that I was able, I'm able now to sell. This is how by doing that, I realized, okay, I want to grow this business. I spent a lot of time, a lot of tears. I have been up and down because, you know, yes, you got the moment of discourage because it's like, eh, all right. And then you go back up. So of course I want to scale my business. My message now is super clear. You have only a nanosecond to make a life lasting impact. That's my motto. All right. The message message is clear. I have a process in place. I also just finished a course online, which is much more affordable. Now I'm ready to go. Of course, I want to scale my business and be out there and telling the world what it is. That's why when my latest book came out, I did probably 80 interviews on podcasts, which I loved because now it's like, yes, let me talk about what I do. Let me help the world. Let me feel this, this passion I have inside that I can exude to the world. And five years from now, I want to be the leader of branding. 
branding. Branding in a way that, you know, like Tony Robbins said, it took complicated into simple. Not so much that he created original content, but he has understood that self-development is a really big machine. And how do you go about it? In five years from now, I want to show people, I'm here. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you build your brand, personal and professional, as we recognized together earlier. It goes together hand in hand. And now I'm able to tell you this is how it happens. So essentially being the Tony Robbins of branding in five years. Pitch Deck 101 LLC out of New York. Do more than just support our clients to pitch their businesses to investors access working capital at 0% APR. We also support our clients to grow and scale their businesses faster and cash flow optimize. Pitch Deck 101 LLC recent partnership with 10X Branding Marketing. LLC and Global Capital Inc. out of the USA has enabled us to form unique partnership with multiple financial institutions, which means we can do even more to accelerate the success of our clients. Let Pitch Deck 101 LLC give you the support you need to pitch to investors, access capital, access new markets and grow, and scale your business. Contact us now on 332-235-1099 for a free consultation. Great. Uh, what I've also seen for your long-term plan, I think one of the reasons that you want to want to help people to build a strong brand, and I do believe it's necessary, um, because in today's world, I do believe that we need to have much more education around personal branding. I think people exist as a person, not knowing that that person uh, value could be significantly enhanced when you bring personal branding to that whole equation and that is all about how you want to show up and you being intentional in terms of how you want to show up and make impact so i can see image impact index llc helping businesses to accomplish exactly and that. Um, can we talk a little bit now about habits? What are those habits for that influences success? From your perspective, the level of success that you have attained, what would you say are the habits that influences success? Okay, so success is a step-by-step -step process, the same way you build your career. You know, and that's what people feel like, you know, suddenly they come to me thinking it's going to be the magic potion. And I'm going to accelerate and sell you nine weeks that represent over 20 years worth of experience. But success is a routine. Success takes, and it took me time also for myself because I was all over the place. It took me a while. And that's when I realized success was, uh, again, a step-by-step -step process, which is really important because that's the only way to build success when I lost it all. I was just starting working with this yogi probably two or three months prior to losing it all. And when I explained that to him, when I told him that, because he's like, wow, you look down. And I'm like, Ugh. Oh my God, I can't even believe. I lost everything. I owe a huge amount of money. My business partners stole me and cleaned me out of everything. Lost my four businesses in 30 days. Terrible. And he said, congratulations. I'm like, okay, I don't know what you're smoking over here, but I tell you, wow, it works. I'm like, did you hear? So of course I had my pity party and I also wanted the world to be with me on that one. He said, no, this is it. Now the slate is clean. You could do whatever you want and now success is going to come. I'm thinking, all right, whatever, let's do our thing. So he would do, we would do yoga and then meditation. And he said, this is where you're going to be rich by stopping your chatterbox, stopping the moment, being present in a moment every morning and money will come just from everywhere. I'm thinking, okay, dokie. Yeah, now I don't even know if I should keep you because you are seriously like, hoo -hoo. <laughs> and, all right, fine. So the first time I'm meditating with him, he's like, oh my God, stop. I can hear you. I'm thinking, I'm sitting in silence across from you. I didn't say a word, but it got me so powerfully to understand. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Because when in the morning, and think about it. You run out of your house, maybe, okay, the clock didn't go off. Now you're late. Everything is late and you, you eating barely anything. You choose whatever is on the, on the hanger. You just run and you have all the red lights because now law of attraction and spirituality is a big component of what I do because, and it goes back to what you're asking me, the process of success. Now you realize the whole day is shattered. It's all over the place nothing works. That's why spirituality is the first foundation of success because it's not just being in Buddha, telepause, and mm, yes, it will be part of that. And you can do it in many forms. You can lay down, you can sit, whatever you are, but you need to be still. 
present in that moment because now by doing so clarity comes and it's got to take practice because again your chatterbox wants to go 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 and talk 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 to you and it's like okay shut up i want to just hear the silence and by doing so with practice you got to get to that place now when you open your eyes you're clear it's like a different environment like i'll do it in the middle of the day i don't care if it's in a bathroom like i'll try to take a bathroom that's a stall where i mean like a, like a private room where i can close the light close my eyes literally from you know corporate setting it's not like i can go i don't care maybe i'll go in my rental car in the parking lot just to be stopping it just for five minutes but those minutes those precious minutes the moment i stop it all it's like resetting everything like in time literally it's like it's quantum physics anyway but it's about saying wow all right oh that's where i am all right now i'm ready for the next step and that's what it is so now when you do that in the morning that's why now appearance can align because you have identified those mo that moment now if you want to go run if you want to go to the gym if you want to read a chapter of a book maybe a self-empowerment youtube video or audio now you're ready and that's what i do I'm, I'm more of a podcast guy i need i need it's like a drug my 15 minutes at least of something just you know whether leadership self and mastery self-development of any form law of attraction that is my way to me to be like all right now what is it that i do oh my coffee Yes, that's my next thing because that coffee is actually very therapeutic for me making it smelling it this moment the steam and they're coming out that just prepares me for the day that gives me like all right now the day is ignited and then now it's what i'm gonna do okay maybe i'll go swim today swimming is also very therapeutic for me it's silence you hear the sound of water and i'm, I'm very much about that moment and now i can say all right how does my day look like i'm old school pen and paper what are the things yeah i know we have a digital era where you know the brain is all completely disconnected from everything mm -mm. present moment pen and paper old school and i'll write the three things i should be doing today and obviously for instance today you were one of them i'm like ah, Gary, ah. we're gonna be together for whatever time now i know that's the next step that i'm gonna do then i have the plan for what's gonna come around midday and what's gonna be later on in the afternoon and that to me is the way you build success and understand there is not a magic trick but it's only putting just like building the foundation of a mansion you want that mansion to stand on quicksand it's got to go you can build it super quick but it's got to go quick down as well as if you do it brick by brick solidly slowly carefully mindfully now you have a recipe for success and that foundation will be here forever. Great. Uh, I want to ask you another question, and that is, but before I come to the question, I want to establish this. You have been successful academically. You have built a successful career uh, working with Hollywood celebrities. You have been in business for over 25 years, and you have been pretty successful in, in doing what you're doing. You are a keynote speaker you are an executive coach, you're an author. This is a lot of success. And I really want to know if you have a step-by-step -step approach that you would call your blueprint for success. Can you talk to us a little bit about what you consider to be your blueprint for success? Oh yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Huh, I always have the answer for everything. I mean, I have the answer, but it's like, wow, it's a great way to make me think. You see, my, my problem was patience. Okay, you know, and I'll go quick about it because I'm not gonna do the, you know, but my father was not exactly an example of love, neither physically or verbally. My first thing was I'm going to find a way to make my income, earn money and get out of here and live my life as I want and wish and desire. And this was, it was good to a fault because it fueled me to be successful, but to the degree of like, oh, I'm going to be so rich and famous. I'm going to show him if I'm a loser. Good enough for the beginning of the journey. But as it got to go, it went more frantically ahead and fast and fast and faster. And then I became ungrateful. I became arrogant about my success. I was really obsessed with money. 
I was obsessed with money and I had a business partner, of course, and he was stealing from me, which I didn't realize for 15 years. He, you know, was not helping. In fact, he was pushing when I was not enough. If I signed a hundred thousand dollar deal, it had to be 200. And if it was 200, never was enough. And my blueprint to success started finally when I slept in my car and wrapped up in my $5,000 blanket in my car. But nonetheless, I'm in my car looking at the sky and I'm wrapped in luxury. And I say, how does my life look like? Oh my God, I'm a loser. Who's going to want to associate with someone who lost it all? Nobody. So here I am with my watch collection and still my cars, which I have now to let go of and this, that, and the other. How do I create what's going to be my next success story? So I slept in my car for oh, three, four months, something. Finally, I said, enough, enough with this garbage. Am I crazy? I'm young, I look good, and I'm ready to go. I have all that knowledge that I've accumulated. I mean, I came here without knowing a soul in 18, and then two years later, I'm on the red carpet in Hollywood. Am I crazy? And that's when I created my step-by-step -step process, realizing first, what do I need? Oh, patience, okay. Observe, okay. Silence. I was always the one talking. I was always, I'm always, I'm always the light of the room, as you can feel. You know, my energy is not exactly the little gray mouse in the corner. No, I walk into the room, I occupy it with my energy. But now that's also how I realize, yeah, I have that in me. But now let's do it for the greater of good. Let's help others. And I remember to say, you know, one day, like I was literally laying in my car and say, but I came here to help others, which I do. Now let's, let's do it more mindfully. And that's why a year or less later, I wrote my first book actually fairly quickly because that became my step-by-step -step process, my evergreen uh, recipe for success, which is be patient, observe, listen to people. Instead of doing the talking, listen. You have all those incredible resources around you. I have the biggest CEOs literally in my life of Fortune 500 company everybody knows around the world. They're my clients. I eat at their table. I know the whole family. I went to every wedding and baptism or bar mitzvahs. Or, and that to me realized that I crafted this beautiful life where I'm so blessed of so many things and have access to all that luxury, but not from a money perspective, but from an experience perspective. Perhaps it's going to be the biggest house on an island, which I could have never, I would have never done that on my own. Walking into a club, and I don't mean a nightclub, a club, a private club, perhaps a golf club or something so private and intimate that these are my moment to remind myself, oh, that's how my blueprint for success is coming. From finally stopping all that noise in my head and all that obsession with money, Money will come again. Money is energy. Money goes, money comes, you lose, you make, you exchange. That's what money is. It's a trade. It's a trade of energy. And that to me is when I lost it all, that's how I was able to build that and learn from it. Okay. I noticed that you spoke earlier on about your challenges, some challenges. At least I, had, I, didn't, I had identified two. You spoke about your dad. You spoke about your business partner that literally... You know, took all of your your gains, but that didn't stop you. You rise and you went on, and um, you are an icon today in your field. But would you care to talk to us just a little bit more about challenges you had to overcome to be as successful as you are today? Yeah, yeah. You know, I was yeah, I was I was a super weak kid. You know, so it started out there where you know I was bullied a good amount at school. And that was the thing. I was bullied at school. I was pushed around and beat up some good amount. And then my father, I went home and, you know, he was not exactly loving. So you see, my brother and I, we, we had the same, you know, experience. My brother took it and became extremely violent and, and, and quick to react and just ready to punch someone in the face and hate the world and all that stuff. I thought to myself, and I was, I was explaining that a little earlier, but I can go into greater, greater details. Really, the concept is the same. I thought about it and said, all right, I even thought of killing myself. I was probably 10 or 11. You know, my father was collecting guns and I put one on my temple, which I can't believe this is the first time ever you're getting a scoop because I've never even said that. And I took the gun and I looked at myself in the mirror. Thankfully, I mean, it was organized enough. There were no bullets uh, in it, in the chamber. But it was like, 
Oh my God. But I realized also at that moment that I was young, I was either 10 or 11. I mean, I was very, very young, obviously I was a kid, but to understand like, I have a choice now to stop it, to stop this madness because I can't even deal with this man anymore. Or I'm going to actually make something great of my life. I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be, I'm going to be rich. At the time I wanted to be, uh, you know, a singer. I had it all figured out. I had a, you know, even the dog, the name of the dog, and it was going to be a German shepherd. And my architect was going to fly from the US. In fact, it's funny because my mom found a few years ago, she found this little dissertation I wrote. I was 11. Where every, no, I was 10, actually. Everything was super clear about how my life was going to look like. And this fueled me into understanding that life has choices. Same as drug, you know, and it took me a long time to be compassionate with people that are addicted because to me, I'm like, you don't have to say yes to anything. You say yes because you want to say yes. You have the option for a yes or a no. And I understood that very, very, very clearly, super, super young. To me, everything is about decision making. Everything has consequences. That it was not clear enough. I was too young, but I also understood that, yeah, now this direction feels really, really wrong. And if I go to that direction, oh, this is really bad. I'm sorry. I'm just there. Again. Yeah, my laptop uh, was about to. Yes, sir. And then, you know, so that was to me also very clear. That's why my mom said, actually, when she said, when you came to the US and here you are 18 years old, I thought, oh, dear God. I mean, she knew me to be, I was always at school. I was a very good student. I was uh, always to myself, never created a raucous of any sort. But she said, you know, now he's in a new culture, new country, new everything. What's going to happen? People are going to offer him drugs. You know, it's a mom's thinking. They're going to offer him drugs, which they did. People came and offered me to drive a car for $10,000 when you're broke. And they offer you $10,000 to make. And that was over 20 years ago, driving a car from Florida to North Carolina. I'm like, well, that must be something wrong in that car to discover that it was a machine to print uh, fake bills. I'm like, yeah, well, no thanks on the offer. You know, I'll pass. But again, that's why that is the one thing. Resilience and understanding of yes and no was always super, super clear to me. So that's how the experience I had as childhood, you know, being pushed around. Some people repeat the pattern. I thought, there is a way to break the pattern. And that's why when people say, oh, he's repeating or she repeats the pattern of what she went through as a child. Yeah, I understand that. But there is also the option to think, well, that really hurt me. This is not good. So if it doesn't feel good, why would I repeat that and bring it onto other beings around me? So for me, that experience was actually what saved me. You see, extreme saved me. That because of that, it created my ambition, my resilience, my dream for bigger my dream for helping, my dream for building a community. That was always to me very, very important to build something that I felt was my legacy and my resilience. As you see, I fall and I've learned when I lost everything that it's okay. It's not falling to fall. It's not a falling forever. It's falling to say, okay, when I got back up, how does that landscape look like? And suddenly it's actually looking better. And you would think that most people think, oh my God, I'm depressed. I need my Prozac. Means said, no, I'm like, all right, what did I learn? Where's my accountability? Because that was the thing too. For the first part of my life, oh, that's his fault, her fault, my business partner. Oh, he did that to me. Mm -mm. I allowed him in my business. I let him take more space. I allowed him to even do things he shouldn't. I allowed that to happen. So accountability became also a big factor of success for me because I realized now when I make a decision, I make it all by myself, whether it goes the way I want or not, it's a different story. But at the end, I'm not going to blame anyone. So all those components, the losing it all, the childhood and all that, that's who I, be I became who I am because I am kind. My heart is big. And that's why the other day, actually, uh, somebody was, oh, yeah, oh, you're nasty. I don't, I don't remember. It was some stupid social setting. I'm like, really? No, I spoke because I said something he didn't like. It was authentic. I am authentic at all times. So suddenly you turn into that bad person, but no, I'm like, no, there is nothing nasty about me. My heart is big, yeah. my heart is kind. I am compassionate, I am loving, I come yeah. in peace. So pretty mm -hmm. much that's created who I am now. You know, I, I think everybody have a story and uh, what I've seen sometimes, there are many persons that take their story and instead of using this as stepping stone and a springboard, 
uh, to embrace greatness, they allow the negative experience to shape who they are. You never want to allow that to happen and to you. So I want to say kudos to you. But Patrice, as you look at your life, do you have regrets? Do the, And if you have any, is it pushing you forward or are they pulling you back? No, I don't have any regrets. I used to think I had regrets. Oh, I should have done it this way, done it that way. Literally, it was a conversation I had with my mom because I go back now very, very often to Paris because she unfortunately got diagnosed with something similar to MS. And so I go there. I'm, I'm there every month and a half, two months max. And somehow the other day we got very philosophical, obviously, because also the illness is making everything back into a perspective that maybe you didn't think of before, but now... When health is in, in you know in, involved, you, know, you feel and think differently. And she did ask me that. She said, "How about we 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 became like that game? All right, if there was to be redone, what would you redone redo?" So my mom came up with her answers, which actually was really that she didn't believe in her dream enough to pursue it the way she she would. The one thing she did great was to be a mom. She was very 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 clear about the fact she was going to be a mom and have children and be a mom, more than a career person. And to me, I said, you know, I can't think of anything. I can't because I wanted to go to the U.S. If I had not gone to the U.S. when I had my offer made, I would have regretted it my whole life. Yes, I went ups and downs and around, you know, with what I did, but I built something from scratch. I met, I meet the most incredible people around the world. I do what I love doing. I enjoy everything. And the decision I made, some of them went sideways. Okay. But I've learned from that because if I didn't, I am where I am now in the level of maturity, success, alignment, because of the things I went through. So to me, no, I, I can't. I really like literally that was a conversation I had with my mom a month ago, a month and a half ago, because I'm about to go in two weeks. And no, I say there is nothing I can think of. I love my life. Awesome. All right. Um, we are about to wrap up. There's a few more questions I have. I, I want to shift the, the focus now a little bit to today you are an influencer without a doubt. You made it big on Hollywood, you know, walkway as an influencer. You made it into the hearts and souls of, you know, top 500, you know, company leaders. You are an influencer. As you sit and you look at your life today, you look back at everything you've gone through what do you think has really inspired you to become an influencer in your industry, the industry that you're in right now? Again, I think social media, no, I don't think, I know, I don't know why I'm saying I think, because I'm looking at social media and the way it's going. Everything is encouraged to go fast and faster, fake and faker. In fact, fake it until you make it is, is, is a sentence that very much, in, especially around the LA area and Hollywood, which is, I understand it's like PR and marketing companies. You have to create a story in order to sell something. Story sells. It's like a movie. It's like a book. You need a story. But social media really, because of the disconnect and the chaos and the white noise and everybody is trying to shout louder than the next and people being famous that we know, no name given, that have absolutely zero talent. In fact, if anything, they are far from an example, a social example, and they have hundreds of millions of followers. And that to me blows my mind in the sense that I'm like, all right, you have no talent, you have no passion. If anything, you're known for what you've done in the past, but that was not exactly the most glorious moment. And yet you are famous making all that money, influencing. And to me, influencing is a social responsibility you need to take at heart. The same way uh, you're a dad with your kids, you're an uncle with your nieces and nephews, you're a neighbor, you're the mayor of your town, or you're the CEO of the company. You have certainly this financial, spiritual, technical in all ways of responsibility. And this influencing part of me, every time I help someone to reach the solution to me, is the most fulfilling, uh, you know, not just saying, hey, I got a 100%, you know, return success rate because I took every single one of my clients or when I do a keynote, I sell so many books or so many coaching or, or else uh, the, the course online. It's about it's about bringing a solution to this world, making the world a better place, making people think of themselves the way they don't. Even I'm talking the biggest leaders 
they have stopped believing in themselves. Yes, they are extremely wealthy. They are well-known. They have all the toys, but they haven't thought deep inside for so long about who they are that they forgot that. They forgot the essence of who they are. So to me, that is my responsibility. As you call an influencer, you're right. I influence even, and I tell people, you don't have to have millions of followers. In fact, I, I push my content out there. I don't fight for how many followers do I have. I don't care. Because to me, my life has to be a success, not how many followers. First of all, you can buy them. They can be fake anyway. So it doesn't matter. But to me, that is this responsibility, one person at a time or one audience at a time. If it's a keynote, that is to me my true calling on this planet to leave a legacy. I love that. Um, what impact do you want to make? And um, how do you want to be remembered? A person that helped, a person that's good, a person that helped someone to go from where they were stuck into the next level, being remembered as a thought provoker because it's like, wow, the guy took branding. Literally, I mean, it's an example I'm only giving him, but Tony Robbins is great on that to me as a model because I looked at it from a perspective of taking something no one even cared eventually at the beginning, self-development, love yourself and everything will come and follow. Well, Woohoo. And then now he's where he's at because he was able to craft something that spoke to people's mind. And that's what I want to do. I really want to take branding, which even I had a hard time. That's why it took me years of refining my message to say, but how do I make branding so easy? And finally, now with the processes that I put in place and then did the course online that's not ready, you know, that's how I realized this is how I want to be remembered as someone who was a disruptor, but for the good, for the great of good to help the world. People sending me messages to say, you understand how you changed my life? I listen to you, whether I'll do a podcast and someone will reach out to me on social media, you know, DM me and say, they were so profound, you did something and you just shifted my mindset. This girl I put on stage one day and by, I did, I used to do an image reading. Okay, forget it, the word was horrible, but for the lack of a better word, I was proving my point and telling the world, by the way you look, everything you have on you is telling me your story. And this girl, within two minutes, I was able to see where she was, unhappy, crossroad, career. Literally, it's like a mentalist experience to a degree. This girl, it was so profound that listen to someone voicing it and actually saying, you could see that from the way I look? Yeah. I could see all of it, all the cues and all the clues are in front of me. And yes, I'm more in tune than anyone else in the room. I'm here to coach you. So therefore, yes, I have more ability to read all this. She changed her career, went back to school. Now she's the head nurse in a hospital in Orlando. That to me, right there. Even if I had changed only that girl's life, that's like, and this is what I want to remember it for. Helping, guiding, coaching, loving. That's really what I want. Love that too. Now... Image Impact in Index, LLC, is really about helping people to do that personality makeover and um, from inside out. And um, I just want to say to the public, you know, it has been really great talking with Patrice. And uh, I know many persons in life struggle with, with this, you know, yes. how to show up from within and how to allow the within, you know, shine outwards um, from that authentic space. And that's what your brand focuses on and um, i really love that uh talk to us a little bit about the future of uh, image impact index llc yeah well right now you know i'm in the uh, search of the dream digital agency that will help me getting my message out there because you need that obviously now i want to go to the next level so that's really the long term now it's time for me to push it out there now i'm ready now i know my my message is ultra clear which took me so many years until saying all right what am i i'm not a wardrobe stylist i'm not a hairdresser i'm not and yet i'm all of that together compacted and you know into one so my long term now is really now this is about well i'm writing my third book which will be even clearer and how meanwhile it will call it'll be called uh mind your brand so it'll be very clear about hey now it's time to think of what is your brand 
how do you define your brand? How do you build your brand? So that's what I want to do. And that book also is going to help me shift the next step of my life. And that will be my turning point this time, because not only three being a great energetic number, it's also one that shows expertise, dedication, passion for the craft and being pushing out there and doing as many keynotes as I can, coaching as many leaders who have responsibilities in the world and making the world a better place. Oh, great. I have two more questions. Mm -hmm. and, and definitely we're here to give you all the support to help to push the brand out there. Yeah. The first question, first of the last two questions is, I feel you. You are a big thinker. And I think in the world we need more big thinkers because I do believe big thinkers um, create impact across the world and i can see that you have a desire to do this not just a desire but you're taking action uh you have already connected with you know with hollywood you have built a name out on hollywood you have been you know made a name in the corporate world so you are action oriented but as we look at your vision the big vision that you have to take your brand your brand global uh how important is access to capital uh, to move this vision forward? Well, of course, it's it's crucial. That's why I always tell entrepreneurs, that's the first thing I say, don't do it. I understand you're excited to build your business, but don't do it on a wing and a prayer. So many entrepreneurs do that. And that's why, what is it? 78% of people the first year actually close their doors because I mean, close their doors, way of speech, because obviously now a lot is digital, but they didn't realize that they were not prepared financially. They were not prepared technically. They didn't have a lot of allocate a budget that needs to be done. To me, it's it's a bittersweet relationship of because of the partnership I had in the past where it's like, oh, yep. Right now, I do what I want. When I want, I make my decisions. I put my own money. Yes, of course, to grow, there is a crossroad. In fact, I was talking with one of my clients who created this brand that he, he sold a little bit ago. It was a chain of food uh, stores, which is he sold for like $450 million. And he was saying, you know, I'll invest in you. But suddenly, it's like, okay, okay. But how does that look like? Because to me, making my decisions, not it's not an ego place. It's about, first of all, a protection place. Because I feel like, okay, <laughs> if you bring money to the table, now we have a conversation, which is a relationship. Of course, we can have. It's a trade. Of course, I, in one hand, I'm, I'm there now to see, I, am I bringing someone in? But then now I can explode faster or do I let organically my brand grow into what it is? But it's also a very strong grind because every day I'm networking, every day I'm somewhere, either I'm traveling, I'm on the plane, I'm in a, in a social setting, and it's a constant me pushing, I mean, marketing what I do because that's what we do. Even though I'm passionate, I want to make money with what I do. So of course, capital is important. So I can only do it to me if I remain with the control of my company. That's for one. And second, I want also a strategic partner. Money, yes, but money is only good until the person attached to that money is also someone who thinks like me, who we are like-minded, where everything is going to be symbiotic. And of course, there'll be fights. I mean, fights, not like a fist fight, but disagreement or strong disagreement because money does that. It raises that and it's business. So it's emotional too. It's personal. What makes it all at some point or another. So that's why money is important, but the cohesive team you make with that person who will invest in your company is not just money from somewhere. I could have taken money from some of my clients. They're good as my clients, but they're not good for me. Not in my life, not in my business or in the mindset that I want to cultivate around the world. Oh, great. Now, one of the reasons I asked that question is because part of what we do is help rising stars, stars like yourself, to access the much needed capital. We'll talk about that outside of this. And of course, what you're talking about is equity. Yes, we see the risk associated with giving equity in your company, but we will talk about, you know, various type of financial um, instruments and um, possibly look at how you can access capital at 0% APR, meaning that there may be no interest for six to 24 months. So outside of this platform, I'll spend some time talking with you about that and see how we can definitely give your business the kind of financial injection it needs to make that not a not a big step 
The last question, where you're on habits and money, so I must ask you a question in relation to habits and money. Of course. What are essential money habits to have? <laughs> last question. <laughs> so the question is, essential habits about money? Yeah. I used to disrespect money. I used to think, you know, because I was making so much so fast, so young, I used to spend it faster than I was making it and my ego was mixing it because money does that. Money brings the good and the bad out of people because, you know, in extreme cases, it's like when you see someone who's drunk, they say, oh, I did that because I was drunk. Actually, you know, alcohol enhanced that nature of yours. And money does that. I have noticed on friends, unfortunately, that it it changes them, but it doesn't change them. It enhances them. And to me, my habit is to say, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, when I lost it all, it was great also because now, of course, I want to make more money than I made before. But what am I going to do with my money? I'm thinking more future. I'm thinking investment. I'm thinking retirement, which I used to think, please, I'll be young forever. Who cares about retirement? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to be making all that money all along to realize now it could stop. The music, the musical chair can happen and you're the last one standing. Money to me, I look at it like I understand, again, the energy level of it. I trade it, mm -hmm. I exchange it, my time for currency. Now, of course, I want to build a business as a residual income with the course online so I can make money while I'm sleeping. And it was a discovery I made when I, my second book was really did really well. It was fun to open my account the following morning and be like, oh my God, look at this. It's on, I don't care even if it was $200, but it's like an extra $200. I, I was sleeping while it was me, being made. So that's why money now, I look at it money as a planning it, thinking about it, respecting it, treating it well. And I changed everything because I realized my possession are not defining who I am. My bank account does not define who I am. Do we need money? Yes. Do I want to make a lot of it? Yes. Do I want to protect my future and also make a difference, as I said, around the world? I do. But I'm much more mindful and respectful of money. And when I spend, I literally think, do I need to spend it? And not because I'm cheap. I actually think, is the value I'm going to, I'm going to get back? in return for that purchase or that that service I'm going to I'm going to buy is that equivalent to parting from that money that I worked hard for and now I think twice instead of just giving my credit card away got you all right love it um is there anything that you want to say perhaps i didn't ask a question that you'd want to speak about i want to give you the chance to say it if there's anything you'd want to say that i didn't ask about you know yes i'm going to add on just because you you speak to people that are in the finance industry in fact my next campaign that's about to run in two or three days now is literally going after you know wealth managers hedge funds but like on a high level financial bankers that that sort of thing this is the thing for those for that industry for your peers for the listeners that you have or you know it's about understanding girls and guys of the world that are in the finance industry don't think for a moment because you look good is going to do the trick on the money because we just spoke about money money time is the most precious commodity we know that but next to it is money and this is the hardest thing people are going to part from and they can only do it if they trust you but fully not like eh, because you know i had some client they think oh look at me i just bought that suit yeah first of all that suit is not fitted uh the shoulder pads look like 1993 and you look more like by the way you still have the tag uh, you know hanging from your sleeve maybe your shoes well they're not polished my grandma used to say you measure a man's quality from the quality of his haircut and the cleanliness of his shoes these are the things you need to understand. The subliminal message you're going to send is not because you just spend money on a new outfit or you just got your hair done. Did you do it mindfully? Did you do it with purpose? Did you align who you truly are authentically? Because people are only gravitating, and especially when it comes to giving you, making like, ooh, that move of I'm going to give you money, I'm going to invest it with you. It takes great level of trust, and that trust is only ignited from the way you look, that nanosecond moment when you appear in the office in the boardroom client's house however your business is formulated or on a zoom call by the way because if you think you can 
full people even if there's a screen between the two of you there isn't there is no fooling anyone people react to it so do it mindfully you want people to invest in you you want people to bring them money and then you're going to work with them make them trust you and the only way to do that be authentic look at the mirror stare at the mirror every morning and if you're okay with that image now you can get out there create success but if you only feel like you can have you know you pick and you have something to say you cannot bring success you cannot expect people from trusting you if you cannot trust yourself what i love about what you said there patrice you have to show up being authentic because in the business world when you're dealing with subject matter expert believe me they know what they know and if they don't know they're going to do that due diligence and you want to be authentic if you need help it doesn't hurt to ask for help so i really love what you what you said there so there your audience um we had patrice here today he is an icon in his own field and i want to say to you look out for patrice i mean if he has reached hollywood i'm certain that he's going to reach the world with his brand patrice thanks for taking the time out for and be with us today to share with us your story and i'm certain that you have been an inspiration to many persons I know this is not the last interview that we will be having with you. It is the first, but definitely not the last, because I'd love to hear more about your story and how you're progressing and to expand your brand across the world. Thank you very much, Gary. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. Elevate your business with 10X Branding and Marketing LLC. Our expert team specializes in enhancing your brand's visibility and connecting you with your ideal clients. We employ strategies that increase reach, leaving a lasting impact and driving client conversion. Trust and credibility are vital in businesses and excel in building them even with a limited budget. Our cost-effective approaches ensure you get the best results without overspending. Ready to boost your business cash flow? Contact us at 332-235-T99 and let 10X Branding and Marketing LLC guide you to success. Our focus is on elevating your visibility, which directly translates to growth experience the power of effective branding and marketing with us, and witness your business thrive.